What? Huh? Wait. What? Who did this? I, I, I don't... I don't understand. Let's, let's have a look at the git log. Not really helpful. Seriously? Who wrote this? What? F I need to make a video about commits. If you are interested in more thoughts about programming, this channel might be for you. Please consider subscribing and hit the notification bell. Commits are the visible blocks of work of a programmer's craft. In this video I will talk about why I think it's so important that we care more about the commits that we push out into the world. And I'm not alone. This video is based on a lot of articles which are all linked in the description below. But why is a clean commit history important anyway? We all should care more about well-crafted commits, because they help us out with a couple of things. First, pull requests are clearer and faster to review. Second, the git log will be a source of valuable information and won't be just a pile of garbage. An intentionally written commit message adds more context to a code fragment than any comment could do. The future maintainer that may thank you may be yourself. Third, checking out an earlier version of the codebase is easy, because a well-crafted commit leaves the software always in a functional state. Okay, how do we do it? A good commit consists of two parts. First, the commit message. And second, the meat of the commit, the actual change. Let's talk about code changes first. A common mistake is to use the git repository as a backup system. Committing randomly to save the current progress with so-called checkpoint commits clutters the git log. Those commits won't have any further intention or value. And returning to one of these might break the code base. That's totally not what we want. We need every public code change to be atomic. Atomic means to be as small and as self-contained as possible. Let me show you what I mean. Your task is to develop a new widget for a dashboard. How would you structure your commits? I would say one unit of work equals one commit. You need data from the database. Add new fields to database service. Is the software still functional? Commit done. You might need a new layout. So add new widget layout. If you need to adapt HTML, CSS, JavaScript, just put them all in there. Never commit changes for different files separately, because each commit would leave the software in an unfunctional state. All right, commit done. And finally, we connect everything. Add controller for widget. And never forget about the unit tests or other configuration that you might need for this commit as well. All right, still working? Commit done. Look at this. Our commit history is full of little gems, each on its own, functional and self-contained. All right, I hear you say. It's not always that easy. Sometimes I don't know what I need to do. That's why we introduce now private branches. Just because you commit something doesn't mean that it needs to end up in the eternal git log. Please, show a little respect. Private branches are your sketchpads. Here you can add all the commits you want. If you want to commit before you go to the toilet, commit it on your private branch. Because it's getting dangerous where you go next, commit it to your private branch. Or just for no apparent reason. When you use a private branch, make it obvious by the naming or tell your teammates to not base the work on it. Because we can't afford to let this show of a commit log end up in the public branches. Public branches. Public branches are all branches that you and your team use together to base the work on. Master, release, develop, hotfix, any feature branch. Everything that ends up on these should be a well-crafted, self-contained, reversible, well-described unit of work. Let's go on with our example. You create yourself a feature branch. And because you're not sure how this is going to work out, you also create yourself a private branch. And you start working. You add some HTML and CSS here and there, and some JavaScript there, fixing some CSS, adding the connector to the database, finding out that the database schema is wrong, correcting the database schema, you don't like the colors anymore, and you need animation. <clears throat> Perfect. But the commits, nah. There are three ways to fix this. The first possibility is to simply squash everything into one commit. To do that, check out your feature branch. 
Merge, squash everything from your private branch and commit. After that, it's time to write your finest commit message. This is a viable solution for a bug fix or a very small feature because you lose a lot of context if the commit size gets bigger. If you think it would be hard for a fellow coder to review your commit, it's time to split things up into smaller pieces. As long as the commits on your private branch are in a progressive order, we can use an interactive rebase to regroup them. To do that, start the rebase. Now you see a list of all the commits you did on your private branch. With the keyword in front of each commit, you can decide how the interactive rebase should process these commits. Interactive rebasing is a mighty feature. If you want to find out more about it, please check the links in the description below. Sometimes the commits on the private branch are all over the place and we have to craft a totally new commit history. Entering the last resort. Check out your feature branch. Merge squash your private branch into it and reset your branch. Now you have the working directory full of your uncommitted changes waiting for you to recluster them. Depending on how you work with your team and when and why you push to the origin, you might mix and match the three ways with or without a private branch as you like. Be creative, but the goal is clear. And on a well-crafted commit history to make the world a better place. Before we move on, hit the like button if you have committed stuff with really bad commit messages. I know you have. I certainly have. On that note, let's talk about commit messages. Why would we even care about commit messages? Superficial stuff. Isn't it about the inner values? No. We need good commit messages. They are the sugar coating on top of our cake of code. If written correctly, they add a ton of value to your work as a programmer. They add context where otherwise a comment would be needed. A diff tells you what has changed, but a commit message tells you why. A commit message shows whether a developer is a good collaborator. Peter Hutterer. This guy works on Linux. He knows stuff. Are you convinced by now? Let's take this commit message here. Edit new database field. Awesomeness and also a variable max awesomeness, which I set to 9000. <laughs> Who did that? Oh, never mind. There are seven rules for a properly formatted commit message. These rules basically exist for the Git tools and help them to show your commit message properly formatted all over the place. Do you have any rules for commit messages? Let me know in the comments below. These are the rules in no particular order. Rule number one, separate the subject from the body with a blank line. Not every commit message needs a body, but this one certainly does. Rule number two, limit the subject line to 50 characters. At least I have done that one right. If you don't do that, it might look like this or this. If you have a hard time summarizing your commit in 50 characters, commit less. Rule number three, Capitalize the subject line. All right, done. Rule number four, do not end the subject with a period. Roger that, progress. Rule number five, use the imperative mood in the subject line. The imperative mood means like giving a command. Close the door, clean the dishes, take out the trash. This might sound rude, but actually Git is doing the same when it's creating commits on your behalf. This might feel weird at first, because we are used to write in the indicative mood, which leads to commit messages like this. If in doubt, try this. A properly formed git commit message should complete the following sentence. If applied, this commit will add a new layout. Refactored controller for login page. Update the awesomeness of the widget. For our commit, this would be if applied, this commit will add a new database field awesomeness. Good enough. Rule number six, wrap the body at 72 characters. This is for the Git tools again. Git won't wrap it for you. So we have to do it. Fun fact, uh, the 72 characters were chosen to give the Git tools some wiggle room for indention. Finally, rule number seven, use the body to explain what and why and not how. This is the really important one. 
I can't stress that enough because it gives additional context to each code change. Look at this commit from the Bitcoin Core repo. Just think about how much time the author saves his teammates by adding this commentary on his code change. We need to stop writing how we did stuff. That is what the div is for. We need to focus on why and how. All right, it's time to finish our commit message. Add new database field awesomeness. In order for the unicorn widget to get its data, a new database field awesomeness was introduced to the schema and the database connector was extended. Okay, cool. Adding some context here. What about the new constant? Let's do something like this. A constant max awesomeness was introduced and set to 9000. This value ensures that the entered values into the database won't go over 9000. Commit done. Whew, that's it. We crafted a really nice commit message which will help our fellow teammates to understand our code better. What is the most important point for you when it comes down to commits? Let me know in the comments below. If you got some value out of this video, please consider to subscribe to the channel and hit the notification bell. Share this video with your friends if you think they commit shitty. That's it for today. See you next time.